up for Mark Britton. Right off the bat, I want to say these tickle. I mean, they tickle me. I don't know what they do to you. Apparently, they're tickling you right now. I didn't realize. <laughs> My eyes are up here. It's got to be weird being married to me, I keep thinking when I look in the mirror. I think, man, it's got to be like, I mean, you see this coming at you in the bed. It's like a labia car wash. Yeah. It's like curb feelers or some shit, you know what I mean? One thing that never happens, I never walk into a room and say, hey, you got the same beard as I do. That never happens. I am Asian, and that's why I wear my beard like this. I'm half Chinese from the waist up. My dad's black. Hi, uh... My birth certificate says I'm cock Asian. <laughs> Once you go yellow, you never leave a fellow. <laughs> Any Asian people here tonight? Asian people, where, where's my ninjas at? My ninjas in the house. Damn. I'm like, ninja, please. Shit, where are my ninjas? Man, it's all right. I moved here to Colorado Springs because I thought there was a lot of Asian people here. I did, man. I told my wife, I said, we got to move to Colorado Springs. There's a lot of Asian people. And then I found out it's just fucking bright outside. And you guys were squinting every time I was talking to you. Move my wife here. She said, they're not Asian. We come inside, you got her round eyes. I was like, hey, that's all right. I feel round eye myself. My mom uh, didn't raise me Asian. She wanted American kids. That was her dream. When she died, she said, I did all of my dreams. I came to the United States. I had American kids. I said, mom, you realize we're still Chinese, right? <laughs> yes, but you're disoriented. <laughs> And I was. And she raised us. She didn't, she didn't teach us none of the language, none of that, none of the culture. I feel like a round eye like you guys. I do. I mean, she would even feed us. Everything she fed us was American food, you know, hot dogs and uh, hamburgers. And then I, you'd look on her plate and she'd be eating, you know, fish heads. You know what I mean? Chicken butt. You know, shit we, shit we throw away. She's eating. You know what I mean? Which made me wonder, what do you think Fear Factor in China looks like? You think they give them shit they don't have every day? It's like, try to put down this bowl of laced potato chips in 30 seconds. That look dry and salty. Pretend it's a monkey rectum. Ha, ha, ha. I did uh, seven voices on an anime cartoon called Dragon Ball Z. Anybody familiar with that? Holy shit. Holy shit. I've been bragging about that for a long time, and that's the most people I ever heard do it, man. Like 10 years ago, I was bragging about it, and nobody gave a shit. You know? <laughs> And now y'all are old enough to drink. Holy shit! That is so... <laughs> I did, uh, I'm gonna do four of the voices for you. I did Corin the Cat. Hey, Yadirobi, let's go grab some Sinzo beans. I did the Ox King, who is uh, Goku's father-in-law, Chi-Chi's father. <laughs> hey, come on, hurry up, everybody. We're gonna be late. <laughs> I did Berter from the Ginyu Force. Hey, Jace, how about the Purple Spiral Flash Attack? And I did the Grand Kai. Oh, yeah, the Grand Kai sounds like this. He sounds like Wolfman Jack from the 70s. Yeah. 
There's the older people who recognize Wolfman Jack. I stole that shit and sold it to the younger kids. <laughs> Made some money off of it, man. I, I toured at uh, uh, Comic-Cons now. That's comic conventions. They call them Comic-Cons. In fact, we're having one here August 19th through the 21st at the Broadmoor World Arena. I will be the host and MC. Come out and see me. Come out and hang out. I'll tell you where all the free shit is. Yeah. For, for a while, I quit doing comedy, and I was just touring some Comic-Cons, because uh, it was a lot easier during the, uh, COVID and after COVID to just do this. <laughs> Pay up. That was it, man. It was weird, too. People would come up with the mask. Everyone was coming up with the masks during COVID, and I wasn't wearing a mask. And they'd come in the booth, and they'd want to take a photo with me. You know, they pay to take a photo with you. It's like, all right, here, take a pay to take a... Hey, you can take your mask off if you want. They would be wearing masks the whole day. I said, when you're taking a photo, if you want to take your mask off, you can. They'd take the mask off. And I'd think, hey, I'm that hot chick that they don't want to use a condom with. <laughs> Because they had the mask on the whole time. And I said, you can take it off. All right, just with you. Just what? <laughs> but uh, uh, doing Dragon Ball Z voices was very boring. It's not like doing voices for The Simpsons, where they sit around a table and they do the dialogue together. Don't. Marge, I don't know if I should sign this. Well, Homer, I think you should. It's going to be a good contract. <laughs> Mr. Simpson, you should sign it now. Don't. We're not going to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know what I mean? It's not like... In fact, it was boring because they had the uh, Japanese animation was done first. So they look at the uh, way that the mouth moved and you'd have to match the way that the mouth moved for that, right? So it was like uh, uh, in a booth by myself, very boring. You know, and one, at one fight in Dragon Ball Z was like five episodes. Do you ever notice? <laughs> For real. They would tell me to yell, and then later on I would see the edit, and the edit would be like, How about the purple spiral flash attack? <laughs> then they would break for commercial. <laughs> they would come back from the commercial, and it would be like, <laughs> To be continued. <laughs> then... Next week on Dragon Ball Z. Ah! Thank you very much. I hope to see you at Comic-Con 